Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're gonna be talking about string comparison. And we got a taste of this earlier when we did this dot equals in a previous video. But now we're going to go in a little bit more depth and talk about some of the gotchas that you need to know in order to do string comparison. But you know what you really need to know about? <laughs> this incredible website called Pramp. If you haven't heard of Pramp, I don't know if you're living under a rock or something, but they've been sponsoring this entire series. <laughs> Basically, Pramp is a website that allows you to practice your interviewing skills to get jobs at places like Google, Twitter, Amazon, wherever you want, basically. <laughs> the way it works is you do an interview with another individual and they rate you on how you did on your performance and if you ended up solving the question correctly. So not only does this help you get over the social anxiety of interviewing, but it also helps you get over the technical questions you might run into in an interview. This is a great way to make connections with other individuals in the software field. Go check it out, give it a try, you won't be disappointed. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. So let's take a look at our code. We have an app that has a password and then we ask the user for that password and compare to see if it's correct. So when we run this, we can guess a password. I know it's let me in, so I'm gonna put that. It returns true when this comparison happens. So we're basically just checking to see if the password right here is equal to what the person guesses. This is the proper way to compare the value of two strings. So it's going to compare this value let me in versus this value let me in. And you can see that each character is exactly the same. So it evaluates to true. Really soon we're gonna be talking about comparison and branching with if statements. And oftentimes you're going to see something like this in some Java code where we have password and then two equal signs guess. These two equal signs are known as the comparison operator. It's different than the assignment operator. So basically it's going to compare this string with this string, but it's not actually the recommended way to do string comparison. And the reason why requires some deeper knowledge of how the data types work in Java. But the main thing to know is that primitives, this will work. But for objects, this does not work. That's because the values that objects contain is actually a reference to the object. So for example, think of this guess variable as a container that points to the string. If that doesn't make sense yet, that's totally fine. It will soon. All you really need to know is that primitives directly contain the value that they're storing. So if we do something like int x equals five, well, x directly stores the value five. When we create an object such as a string, and we could use the string constructor, for example, this is an object. Strings are not primitives, so the way they're stored is a little bit different. And when we do comparisons with objects, it's not comparing the values, such as this string here, it's actually comparing the memory location. So it's asking if it's the same area of memory. <laughs> so you can see how that could be pretty confusing. So to see this in action, let's give it a try. I'm just gonna clean some of this up. And what we're going to do is we're just going to output this comparison like so. And when we run this, well, first it's going to do this system out right here. And this is going to actually compare the string content right here. And this one should return true if we get the password right. This one down here though is going to compare the location of memory. And these are not referring to the same exact strings. So it's going to return false. So when I say let me in, you can see the first one says true. And then the next one says false. So to sum up everything I just said, you'll want to use this technique versus this technique. One problem though is that sometimes this will return true. For example, let's say we create two variables, string A and we'll set that to high, and then string B and we'll set that to high. So these have the same exact values. And then what I wanna do is I wanna compare these. And we're gonna say A compared to B. And this is probably going to return true. You can see the final output is true. So what in the heck is going on here? <laughs> this actually tripped me up for a while because I couldn't figure out why sometimes this comparison worked and other times it did not work. Because clearly these are two different strings, right? So why exactly is it coming out to be true? And in my wisdom, I figured out the answer by searching Google. <laughs> So inside of the Stack Overflow question, we're talking about string interning. And it's basically a process that goes on behind the scenes. So if I scroll down to one of these answers that was really helpful to me, you can see this catchy interview question here. So this is actually some good stuff to know. Looking at this code, it's a similar thing where we have two exactly the same strings, but they're in two different objects, yet it evaluates to true and it prints equals. And this guy explains how the test string value is interned. 
for you by the compiler. And I haven't studied this a whole lot, but I basically understand it as some sort of caching. So if I scroll up again to this question here, this guy explains how doing string.intern on a series of strings will ensure that all the strings will use the same memory. This can save memory because if you have the value John a thousand times, the end result is that you only have one John and it's only allocated one time in memory. So this is really going into the deep end of Java and I'm honestly not sure it's important to know all this. As long as you're doing the right technique of comparison, you should be good, but it can definitely help to know that there are situations where the strings are automatically interned, such as in this case here. Basically Java is seeing these string literals and saying, hey, these have the same exact value. So we can save memory by having these two variables point to the same area of memory. Sort of like an optimization thing, except the result is that sometimes when we do these comparisons, we're not getting the results we expect. So to conclude, looking back at our code, <laughs> you'll definitely want to use this dot equals. We can avoid that interning if we were to go like new string with this constructor. And for some reason, this will say, hey, these are not string literals. We're trying to make string objects. They're not the same thing. And then when we run this, the final result is false when we do this equals equals or the comparison operator. So that's how the comparison operator works with objects, but just for completeness, I'm gonna show you an example with primitives. If we have two variables such as int x equals 10 and int y equals 10, when we compare these, we should get the value true. x equals y, run this, the final value is true. Primitives are different than objects in that they contain the value directly, so when we do this, we're comparing the value 10 to the value 10, which evaluates to true. It's kind of funny because at this point, you probably have a pretty good understanding of string comparison, more than the average developer on strings, but we haven't even talked about some of the most basic structures in Java development and development in general. So what you need to do is you need to stick with this course because we're gonna go into all of that. I just wanna be sure that you guys have enough depth to be a really good Java developer. So thanks guys, please be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed this series so far, and check out the description for links to the crash course, the notes, and our very generous sponsor. I'll catch you guys in the next video.